Uh, how's the progress going this week at practice, and uh, what do you think of the, the challenge ahead? Uh, the progress in practice has been good. You know, you, you always worry about the psyche of a team, you know, losing two in a row, uh, especially the way we've lost those last two games. But, you, you know, the kids are, have been you know, very resilient. They bounced back, uh, you know, after a Sunday. You know, they had their heads down a little bit, but they really bounced back the last two practices and have some very high-spirited, you know, really good practices. How encouraging was that last performance? I mean, to shut them out in the first half and to limit them to the yards that they did, I mean, it had to be encouraging for you. There's always some, uh, you know, individuals that we felt like uh, played well, even in some of our worst, you know, losses. Uh, we always, you know, feel like there's some individuals that got better, you know, during the game. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we still feel like, uh, you know, winning is still the most important, you know, factor, you know, in the game. And we still felt like we could have made some, you know, game, you know, changing plays to give us the opportunity to win the game. Uh, but it's been encouraging, to, you know, to go off your question that we have some guys that we can really see that have turned the corner and are really starting to play at a high level. Looks like Greer is one of them. He matches career high in the first half with seven tackles, finished with 10. What are you seeing from him? Uh, we've always, uh, you know, thought very highly of Antonio. He's, uh, you know, one of those, um, you know, young guys that we always look to that, you know, when he ever reaches his potential, he's got a chance to be as good as any linebacker that's played here. And that's high praise, but it's the truth, you know, considering the linebackers that have come here, you know, throughout the years. But he has that, that type of ability. Uh, and, you know, the more he plays and the more he matures, we expect to see those kind of performances every week. How is Patrick Macon coming along? Um, you know, it's an ankle, and you know how it is. With, uh, it's not a high ankle sprain, but it's right there in that mid area of, of his uh, lower leg. So it's not uh, the easiest to come back from, but he's a tough kid. He's actually uh, practiced a little this week, and he's been in with the trainers uh, rehabbing 24-7. So we're hoping he's going to be available for Saturday. We've faced some pretty good quarterbacks this year, but this kid's having a phenomenal season. What do you see? And it's not just him. It's, a, it's an arsenal of weapons. Yeah, this is uh, one of the most explosive offenses in the country. And when you watch them, you don't see uh, a lot of weaknesses, you know, starting with the quarterback, obviously a, a veteran guy and a white, uh, you know, kid, um, you know, doesn't get rattled easy, uh, kind of like a coach on the field, but a very talented coach on the field. And then you go to the running back, uh, Gainwell, who I know uh, Coach Novell said might be the most talented player he's ever, he's ever coached. And that's high praise from where coach has been. Uh, but you see the talent there, and their wideouts as a as a group is a special unit, you know, led by the Coxy and the, uh, and the Taylor kids. So it's going to be a big time challenge. They don't have many weaknesses, and um, we're going to have to have one of our better defensive performances. Speaking of defensive performances, you guys started out pretty well against Cincinnati. Second half kind of faltered. What do you guys need to do to play a complete 60 minutes? Um, I think the, we didn't change much uh, in the second half. We missed two tackles. It's what I've always said. You wear a single high aggressive defense. Uh, and when you're high risk, you're, you know, you're going to give up some things. But we're also high reward. Uh, we didn't change much. But if you watch the particular game, we the two big runs, and particularly the run uh, after the screen uh, that kind of got them in field goal range were, were missed tackles. Guys didn't get off of uh, blocks. Um, and, you know, that's, that's going to be a part of it. It's a part that you don't like as coaches. We got to get guys on the ground uh, when uh, we don't necessarily fit the box the right way uh, inside. And we didn't get that done. And that's how they got you know, you know, down there for the two scores. Really, all three scores you know, involved in this tackle, if you include the field goal. One of the outgoing seniors, Greg Reeves, um, you guys offered him a scholarship pretty much right out of the gate when you all got here. What did you all see in Greg at that point? We offered him a scholarship in the summer when we first got here. And the big thing was, uh, uh, you know, I tell the story, he was probably about the fourth or fifth guy on the depth chart because we didn't know him. Yeah. We saw a bunch of older guys in front of him. So we gave him the opportunity, and he came in as humble as he could be, and he worked his way. And you guys know how hard that is in college football nowadays without any injuries to kind of jump over you know, three or four guys, and he did that. And it didn't take a long time, you know, probably in the first week of spring practice where we saw his talent and his work ethic kind of jump off the screen. So it was an easy decision, and obviously we're glad we did it. 
can you say about this group of seniors as a whole on your side of the ball? They've led this team well and really produced this year. Uh, I, I, I love this group of seniors, uh, you know, and even the guys that just come in this year because they've uh, fit in so well with uh, our culture. But, you know, when you go with the guys that have been here since the beginning with us, with, um, you know, Kirk Livingstone and especially Greg, you know, you really, uh, you know, admire those kids. And I tell people all the time, those are two young men I'm going to remember for the rest of my life because I know they're going to be very successful just because of the type of people they are. Not just great football players, but even better people. And you don't, you don't find that very often. So, you know, to me, these two, these two are, uh, you know, ultimate bulls that should be remembered for their whole careers for what they've done on and off the field.